Now, let's look at soya. The soya effect on fibroids is controversial, so put on your skates. It's thought that high soya consumption makes fibroids grow and makes fibroid symptoms worse. But, contrary to this popular belief, moderate consumption of soya products that contain phytoestrogen may have a protective effect against fibroids in some cases. According to a paper from the Harvard School of Public Health, soya is unique in that it contains a high concentration of isoflavones as a type of plant estrogen. It works in a similar way to human estrogen, but with much weaker effects. These soya isoflavones can bind to estrogen receptors in the body, and they can cause either weak estrogenic or anti-estrogenic effects. So when you eat them, they may alter the estrogen production one way or the other and affect the balance, contributing to fibroids growth. But please remember, individual responses to soya can vary, which could explain why some women experience fibroids growth with soya while others don't have that experience. In addition, some studies link exposure to soya milk as a baby to fibroids growth. Other studies don't. So if you have fibroids, what should you think about soya? Some studies have shown a significant link between soya and soya milk products and the growth of fibroids. Some have not. The bottom line, if you like eating soya products, avoid excessive consumption. Next, alcohol caffeine and tea. This is another area where study findings are also controversial. Let's start with alcohol. One study linked the current use of alcohol and consumption of 20 years or more to a higher risk of having fibroids. When we're talking about different types of alcohol, beer is more related to fibroids growing than wine or liquor. In another study, surgeons found out that they were carrying out more operations for fibroids on women who consumed more than 20 grams of alcohol daily. That's interesting. What about caffeine? Well, some studies did not show a link between caffeine and the growth of fibroids. Others show that there is an increased risk of fibroids growth with caffeine intake. And they explained this by its effect on increasing the production of sex hormones and production of estrogen. Next, what about tea? There are not very many studies on tea and its effect on fibroids. However, one type of tea has some robust data. Yes, that's green tea. And it's because of its primary component, which is epigallocatechin gallate or EGCG. The study showed significant benefits to symptoms and the overall quality of life for women with fibroids. Taking green tea compared to another group that did not take the green tea. Please check out this video on my channel here to learn more about studies like that. Green tea is thought to be an effective, safe and inexpensive treatment option for managing fibroid symptoms like heavy menstrual bleeding and pelvic pain. So we're moving on. Let's talk about fruit and vegetables. Eating more fresh fruit and fresh vegetables is associated with a lower fibroid growth. Some studies even suggest that they protect against the development of fibroids. We know as much as two to four servings per day is better if you have fibroids than one serving or even eating none at all. Let's look at some specific examples. Take strawberries. They've been identified as possibly being able to provide treatment or prevention of fibroids after certain studies show that strawberry extracts could lead to the death of fibroid cells. Curcumin is a nutritional supplement that may also affect fibroid cells in the same way. And this has also been picked up from this study. Another example is tomatoes, which contain lycopene that's been shown from these same animal studies to possibly reduce the risk of fibroids growth. Other good examples of fruits and vegetables are apples, broccoli, cabbage, citrus fruits like oranges and grapes, pineapples, spinach, lettuce, beans and legumes, potassium-rich foods like potatoes, bananas, avocados, and 
more. So let's head on now and talk about vitamins. Can vitamins cure fibroids? Now, vitamins are micronutrients which we recognize for their effect on many of our body's functions. But when it comes to the association between vitamins and fibroids growth, there are actually only a few studies of vitamins with the exception of vitamin a and vitamin d so these have told us that low amounts of vitamin a from animal sources are related to increase in fibroids growth they didn't find this link for fruit and vegetable sources of vitamin a so some of us will find that if we have low vitamin a that is associated with the growth of fibroids and symptoms to date there's been no link between fibroids growing and vitamins or supplements like folate, vitamin C or vitamin. But by far the biggest vitamin studies are around vitamin D, where we've learned that low vitamin D is associated with an increased risk of fibroids growing. And many studies have demonstrated that women of different ethnicities are more at risk of fibroids when they have low vitamin D levels. These include studies from India, Turkey, China, Italy, the US and the UK affecting women of different backgrounds. In fact, an Italian study not only confirmed the link between the biggest fibroids and low vitamin D levels, but also showed that when you corrected the vitamin D levels in those women, their fibroids shrank, reducing their need for medication or surgery in many cases. 